Welcome into K-State Online. I'm Mason Both. That is Drew Galloway here on a Tuesday with a recruiting update for you because there are a pair of commitments that took place on Monday, somewhat surprising on one. The other felt like it was trending in this direction and that it was going to happen, and that one came on the football side of things, which, again, we'll have to kind of flip this thing all around and uh, maybe have the conversation again, Drew, how much do bad or good performances on a game day visit actually impact guys that make their decision uh, when it comes to selecting their school? So they get a football commit. K-State also gets a basketball commit in a, a weird way, and we'll talk about that uh, all coming up in just a minute. But before we do that, I want to remind everybody that K-State getting ready to head over to Ireland again, get on the passport thing. Maybe if – you know, you can't really do this as a gift, uh, but you, you know, holiday season, just Fill out, friendly tip for somebody. Yes. Give them the papers, uh, make them do it. But the holiday season is here and it's time to find the perfect gift for the cats fan in your life. And you can give your friends and family the trip of a lifetime to see the wildcats take on the cyclones in the 2025 Aer Lingus college football classic in Dublin, Ireland. Visit cats to Ireland.com for information on official travel and hospitality packages. That's cats, the number two, Ireland.com. Would be a heck of a gift to give somebody. Say, hey, uh, you're getting to go watch the cats and you're getting to do it over in Ireland and you're not having to pay for it. So uh, that does seem like the best way to do things. All right, let's start on the football front here. J.D. Davis, a Juco wide receiver uh, coming from Trinity Valley Community College, uh, played his high school ball in Fort Worth. So he's a Texas guy through and through. And, uh, doesn't have all of his ratings yet, so the only one that's currently graded him is 24-7. They have him as the number 42 Juco prospect this year, the number five wide receiver. Um, what Number one, how fast does this thing come together? And then number two, uh, what kind of player is J.D. Davis? Yeah, number one, uh, again, we, we talk all the time about like some recruitments are sprints, some are like a slow burn. J.D. Davis was a sprint. K-State offered him, I think it was like last Monday or Tuesday, I believe. And then an official visit gets scheduled for the last weekend and it, it gets done really quickly. And, and I think that that's one where you, you look at his offer sheet and he doesn't have the best offers in the world or the most offers in the world. But with K-State getting involved and closing so quickly, you never know how much that that could have changed even if K-State was like, hey, we're going to offer you, but we don't want to take you on an official visit until the following week. Like, who knows what would have happened in that in-between time. Uh, but K-State gets it done very quickly. And, and I think that it is, it's an addition that makes some sense to me if you really think about what K-State's losing this year at receiver, that they, they need guys that are going to be a little bit older uh, for next year's team. And the good thing about Davis is that you don't have to really rush him and play him right away because he still has a red shirt available to him. Yeah, and K-State only had one receiver in the class right now, and Adonis Moyes. So this is one of those where this is not like coming in here to tell you that K-State just got some earth-shattering receiver. Now, they would love to turn him into somebody that uh, was a, a significant contributor, but this is one of those that, is probably just a, a flyer and filler type spot. And there's upside there to like about Davis. So you think, Hey, maybe we're going to get something out of this and, and that helps us. But th that's kind of what we've seen cases K state do over the last couple of years. Uh, wide receiver in particular has had some of these kind of burning hot and fast type of recruitments. Uh, now some of it's been on the high school end, um, but this one makes a lot of sense. And like you said, Two years of JUCO experience, did not redshirt at the JUCO level, so he's going to have three years available to him at K-State, two of them to play for everything. Um, and I know that there was a lot of hubbub because everybody's in a very negative place right now coming off of the last two games for K-State, which you absolutely deserve to be in a negative place right now. Um, there shouldn't be a lot of positivity given to this football team at this point in time based on the way they've played. But I think people wanted to move on and, and say, okay, well, look, yeah, great, you got a receiver that – his best offer after K State was, I mean, it can be debated on who it is. It was, it's probably 
Troy or Louisiana Tech uh, or well, somebody along the Western Kentucky, maybe? I was gonna say, Western Kentucky is a contender of the Conference USA. Okay. All right. So there, there you go. Like, what what should people make of that with the competition that was here for K State? Because we've talked about it in the past when these guys don't have grades or, or grades that you think are favorable enough. Look at the offers. What does this offer sheet say to you about JD Davis, and why should people still feel uh, optimistic and pleased with this addition? I think that people should still be optimistic because he still has that redshirt year. And, and I think that he provides something that isn't exactly thriving in the receiver room and, and that he, he looks to have really good straight line speed and can really go and, and be, I don't know if he, he would be like a guy that you're like, okay, that's a number one receiver like down the line, but he's a guy that I think if you get the ball to him in space, he can really thrive and be like a kind of a gadget guy, return guy. And I think that every team kind of needs that in K state's receiver room right now. Doesn't exactly have the, the guys that are the fastest in the world at the moment. Like you even look at like Jace Brown as the, the deep threat for K state right now. And I don't know if his speed, if he's faster than JD Davis is. So K state really needed this. And I think that this is one, too, that you can kind of shock up to as, okay, he doesn't have the, the best offers that you'd probably, like, want to see in somebody. But also junior college football is in kind of a, a weird spot with the, the transfer portal and everything uh, that goes along with it. Uh, but you also look at, and I, I pointed them out as they are a contending team in Conference USA, but Western Kentucky has had some really solid receivers from all kinds of levels that have came in there and made an impact. And that's a G5 school that I'm like, okay, they really wanted him. And that's a school that kind of knows what to do on the offensive side of the ball because they've had some really good offenses and really good offensive coordinators of, of recent, one being at Texas Tech currently, uh, that they seem to really know what's going on at the receiver spot. Yeah, a couple of other teams on there that K-State knows very well about just finding receivers and doing good things in Troy and Arkansas state who both had some guys coming to make some impressive catches in Manhattan. So uh, it's one to monitor. It's it, again, if they're adding a guy that it's because they have room, there's no reason to not use that room. And I don't think anybody here would be saying that, Oh, you don't need to be adding more receivers to K state right now. You got that spot figured out. No, it's pretty apparent that K state could still get better in that department. So uh, fill it up, take your chances and, and maybe you hit, hit it on this one it's kind of uh the the last i guess step in recruiting sometimes is when there's a little bit of a struggle on spot you know you're the one guaranteed way to make sure you don't get anybody good is by not taking anybody so k-state saw a need there they added juca wide receiver with some upside and now we'll see how it ends up looking for them uh, the, the other forward. thing that I'll, I'll add to this again and we talked about this i think it was after the ku game mm -hmm. we talked about this after the houston game we're going to talk about this after the Arizona State game. The actual game doesn't matter as much as you think. Yeah, the the offers that Davis had, like this was his power four option. But even you look at uh, Kelton McKell, the defensive tackle, uh, junior college defensive tackle that visited K State, has offers from South Carolina, Tennessee, and TCU. And guess what? He still really liked his time in Manhattan, and the game mm. didn't impact him very much. He said that he said that he would have liked to see them win, but K State's still like firmly in his top like three or four schools. That includes Tennessee, South Carolina, TCU. So you you look at it, the actual game does not impact as much as you'd think. Well, and also at the end of the day, yeah, it'd be nice if you're going into a place that that they won and all that. That makes it a little bit better of an experience, but. Um, unless you're going up to a team that is like a perennial loser, uh, that, I mean, that's, that's where losing really hurts you or where winning really helps you is if you win a bunch of games all the time, yeah, it makes it pretty easy to sell. But like K state is a type of team where if somebody comes in and they see a loss, you're not like, Oh yeah, man, these guys suck. You're just like, Oh, not a great game could be better, but you know, I'm going to be a part of the solution moving forward. Like, I don't think these guys think. Oh, because they lost to Arizona State when I went on my visit means 
that they're going to lose to teams like Arizona State for the next four years. Uh, that's just not how this works. And they see that K-State is still 7-3. and three. So yeah. what, one loss doesn't deter. It just like one win doesn't really help yeah. as much as you would think either. But if you lose a fourth game, then the entire class is decommitting and the program is being shut down. So beat you better beat Cincinnati. That's uh, that's the recruiting message this week. Uh, let's flip gears and go to basketball because they've made an interesting addition to the roster in the middle of the season. And I saw I like somebody's joke uh, on the board yesterday. I I should probably go back to try and find and give credit to the specific person. Uh, but the poster that said this is the player to be named later in the Naquan Tomlin trade gave me a good laugh because Jerome Tang and his staff have added Tyreek Smith, who started this year at Memphis, did not play in a single game, and has bounced around a lot of different places in his career. So some of you may be sitting there and saying, oh, you know, that name sounds kind of familiar to me. Well, that would probably be because he started his career at Texas Tech uh, in the 2021 season. So uh, that would be the the next to last year of Jerome Tang. Then he transferred to Oklahoma State, played there for two seasons. So he played there for the last Weber year in the first Tang year um, and played in 30 games at least at, at all of those places and played 12 and then 16 minutes a game as two seasons at Oklahoma State before transferring last year to SMU. Uh, where he played about 20 minutes a game, averaged eight points, grabbed five rebounds a game, um, and and did some other things, uh, almost two blocks a game as well. So he transferred to Memphis then, for whatever reason, didn't like Memphis. He's back in the portal, and he's out. Um, somewhat similar to, I guess, what you would say happened to Will McNair last year, where Anquez Glover, Will McNair, ended up at Providence, went on their, their European tour with them, if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> and then entered the portal and ended up at K-State. Uh, Quez Glover, he was going to be at BYU. He was there, and then, nope, he wasn't. He was at K-State. Um, but this is kind of a journey, man, and this is the, one of those things where uh, it, college sports has changed so much to where that's a term that I think can be used now in college athletics is that a guy is a journeyman because this is going to be the fifth school that he's been a part of uh, once he gets to K-State. So what is the plan here with Tyreek Smith? And you see that – even if there's some questions here, the transfer portal grade on him going into this year. So what he was graded out as and evaluated as leaving SMU before he ended up at Memphis is a four-star transfer this cycle. So somebody that that on three and, and the other sides thought had some value. Uh, so what's the expectation here with Tyreek Smith? Yeah, so the expectation this year is that he's going to most likely get to K-State after – the first semester is over because there's only a few weeks left and then kind of just be a practice body right now as he red shirts and kind of just waits his turn. But it, it is interesting that he is a journeyman in college sports. And it sounds like the NIL stuff at Memphis wasn't as good as he anticipated and was led to believe. And I think that he left Memphis like, probably like three or four days before the season started. If I remember right, it was a very interesting timing on when he decided to end up leaving. Uh, but the transfer portal in basketball just never stops. And, and this kind of popped up out of nowhere, which was kind of wild as well. Uh, but he brings athleticism to the table. At, it's like six, 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 seven has long arms can really jump is probably a rich man's version of buddy rich which is kind of interesting because you would probably want Buddy Rich on next year's team. And then you're adding Tyreek Smith to next year's team. So I'm not really sure what is kind of the, the end game there because you have two guys that are extremely, extremely similar. In fact, and I say this kind of tongue in cheek because he's one of one this year, but buddy rich might be a better shooter than Tyreek Smith. So it's interesting because he can be a lot of things. Cause he's super, super athletic. Like he could be a small ball five, a really long four, 
but it, it is wild to add somebody already to next year's uh, roster out of out of the portal. It, that, yeah, that, the, that's, that's kind of like the world that we're living in, I guess. Yeah, yeah. K State trying to continue to be the portal kings, uh, and they've done that with adding Tyree Smith. I, I think this is one of those where. Um, I guess you're just looking and seeing that you might have a need next year. You think this is maybe a good time to strike while the iron's hot where, um, you know, probably not many others are looking to get into this right now. And so I guess if you think you can kind of sneak some value out of it and uh, make the addition now, have him here and have him ready to go for next year, that's good. And, and maybe you think that he's somebody that will also help you uh, in, in the practice settings like, you know, we're talking yeah, he- about here. He will be a hell of a practice addition because, I mean, that, this is a dude that has lots of game experience and, and will be on the scout team once he gets to once he gets to K-State. Yeah, so uh, it's good. I don't know. It, it's an interesting ad. It came out of nowhere, like we said. Uh, but I, I think that this is probably a good thing for K-State. Uh, you know, again, I'm uh, a little bit of fence riding here today, but... Uh, this is just one of those that I don't know that it, it's it's a big deal or if it's a bad deal. Like I don't think it's either of those. I think it's just like a, a nice little ad, and you can only get something good out of it because you get so many spots on the college basketball roster. Not everybody's going to play. So if Tyreek Smith comes in and he's a very valuable piece, then you did a great job here. And if he doesn't do anything, then it's really no harm to you. You just got to make sure that you get the impactful guys elsewhere or the guys that are currently on the roster that will carry over to next season are going to be there as well um i think the things like better defender than buddy rich if you're talking about comparisons there so that's helpful um obviously with experience he will be a little bit more physical and the other thing to point out here is i talked about all those games that he's played in but the fact that he was able to play 30 games at texas tech as a freshman uh, proves that they felt comfortable getting him on the floor about nine minutes a game. Then he played 12 and then 16 minutes at Oklahoma State. So, like, I get it. Oklahoma State, not a great team. We've covered that. But this is one of those deals where uh, he was trusted to be on the court. He has that experience, which is something different than a guy like Buddy Rich has had where we've seen him kind of sparingly, but he certainly doesn't didn't have that many opportunities at that young of an age. So there's some talent there with Tyreek Smith. It's not like a game-changing ad, but he can be helpful uh, if you get him carved out into the right role. And I think, you know, Buddy Rich has gotten really good with his finishing, but this is a – Smith plays like a more powerful player, and you talk about the size. Buddy may even end up being slightly taller. I mean, he's listed at 6'7". Smith's listed at 6'6". Smith plays like a taller player, though, and like a bigger guy. Um, so I, I, I don't think there's anything bad about that. And obviously K state has struggled with defense the last couple of seasons. So, uh, you try and look for somebody that can kind of help you out, uh, down there and we'll see what ends up coming out uh, of this one. But yeah, I don't know. Just kind of fascinating to think about and, uh, look at with, with the Tyreek Smith edition, cause nobody saw this coming It just popped up here. It's like, Oh, okay. How about that? Yeah, it, it is. Inter- it is interesting in that aspect it also like you would hope that this means that you have one less spot to fill in the off season so i mean that that's another thing that i think is a benefit but it, it is just wildly fascinating that we're in a world where tyreek smith was on the transfer portal and, and what is committed to k-state and won't play until next year yeah, pretty crazy. Uh, and if you're wondering now, K State only as it currently stands would have three open spots to add to next year's team. But as we know in college basketball, uh, even if you feel good about guys in your roster moving forward, somebody or a handful of guys are probably going to jump ship and uh, move on. So it'll probably be more than those three that K State has to replace. But as it stands right now, they have uh, three open spots that they can utilize next season so that is uh the latest on k-state recruiting with a basketball and football edition and we'll have more on k-state and everything they've got going on tomorrow we will do probably a little bit of a, a longer format tomorrow because we'll we'll talk a little more football 
kind of give a state of where things are there, and then we'll get a pretty good idea of how K-State's going to bounce back and how they look tonight against Mississippi Valley State, who an atrocious basketball team. <laughs> Terrible. The worst in college basketball. But The worst that's probably, gone, that's probably came to Manhattan before. Well, yeah, fan did post today that by Ken Palm standards, they are the worst team K-State basketball has ever played. But I think we'll be able to tell the situation with K-State basketball based on how it looks tonight. And, uh, you know, anybody should beat this team by at least 30 points. Um, if K-State doesn't do that, then sound the alarm bells because this is a terrible basketball team they are about to play. Yeah, Texas and Mississippi Valley State, if you want a kind of a glimpse of how bad Mississippi Valley State is, they were tied at the under-12 timeout in the first half on Saturday. And Texas still won the game by 46. Yeah, pretty crazy. <laughs> pretty crazy. And what, Mizzou beat them by 70-something last week? Yeah, they haven't kept a game against a Division One school within 38 points yet. Hmm. All right, well, we'll see if they can uh, not do that again tonight. That'd be, that'd be significant here for K-State to just put away a bad opponent. Uh, if not, this is it's not going to be fun thinking about uh, the next couple of weeks of K-State basketball. They got a lot to still get figured out. We learned that last week against LSU. Have they done anything to change it in this uh, almost a week stretch that they've had to bounce back from the game with LSU? We'll find out tonight, but we'll talk about it all tomorrow. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. Thanks for watching K-State Online. Back again tomorrow to talk K-State football and basketball. I know everybody's very excited about how things are going for both teams right now. <laughs>